Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to uh, be with you this morning. And my topic is PCSK9 inhibition, will it render PCI obsolete? I'll give the answer right now. No one in this room has anything to worry about, at least for the moment. These are my disclosures. So we'll talk a little bit this morning about lessons learned about PCSK9 from human genetic studies, a little bit about the function of PCSK9 in regulating LDL receptors and LDL cholesterol levels, and the effects of pharmacologic inhibition of PCSK9 on lipids, atherosclerosis, and clinical outcomes. About 10 years ago, some very interesting genetic data arose that identified PCSK9 as a potentially very uh, important target in therapeutics. So these are data from the ERIC study, Atherosclerosis Risk in Communities trial, and about 3,000 patients underwent genotyping. And you can see in the upper left panel the distribution of LDL cholesterol levels among the approximately 98% of the cohort that had two copies of wild type PCSK9. And in the bottom left, you can see the leftward shift in the distribution of LDL cholesterol levels among approximately 2% of the cohort that had one copy of a dysfunctional loss of function uh, mutation in PCSK9. And what was very interesting in this ERIC cohort that was followed for 15 years is that the 2% who had the loss of function in PCSK9 shown on the right had an 88% lower risk of incident coronary heart disease. So this led to a very vigorous investigation of what the function of PCSK9 was in regulating lipoproteins. And in this cartoon, you can see the uh, small globe-shaped blue and yellow structures. Those are LDL particles. You can see the horseshoe-shaped pink particles. Those are PCSK9 molecules. And then the antenna-like structures on the surface of the depicted hepatocyte, which are LDL receptors. So the function of PCSK9 is to degrade the LDL receptor that has been internalized into the hepatocyte when um, it's engulfed by endocytosis, and that's the top red arrow pointing to that degradation of the PCSK9 in the endosome. And that then prevents LDL receptors from being recycled to the surface of the hepatocyte to pick up the next cargo of LDL particles and results in a lower population of LDL receptors on the hepatocyte surface. That's indicated by the second smaller red arrow. So the result of this is that PCSK9 reduces the clearance of LDL particles from the circulation and thereby um, raises or leads to higher LDL cholesterol levels. Conversely, if PCSK9 is inhibited, either with a monoclonal antibody shown in the upper left of the slide or with a small interfering RNA shown at the bottom of the slide impairing PCSK9 synthesis in the hepatocyte, we um, increase the population of LDL receptors on the surface of the hepatocyte, increase the clearance of LDL particles from the circulation, and typically with this kind of inhibition, LDL cholesterol levels fall by about 60%. So does this have clinical importance as a therapeutic tool? First, we'll look at the effects on coronary atherosclerosis. And this was investigated in the GLAGOV trial. This was about 850 patients who were treated either with a PCSK9 monoclonal antibody, evolocumab, or placebo, either of those on top of optimized statin therapy for 18 months, and they underwent two IVA studies, one at baseline and one at the end of treatment. And you can see that in the statin plus placebo group, coronary atheroma volume over this period of time was static. There was essentially no change. But in the statin plus evolocumab group, there was a substantial reduction in coronary atheroma volume. It was highly significant. 
and you can see that the, there was a sharp contrast in the achieved LDL cholesterol levels in this trial, 93 versus 37 milligrams per deciliter. What about cardiovascular outcomes with PCSK9 inhibition? So we have two out of three of the major trials completed. Fourier, which I'll spend a few minutes discussing, Spire, which was uh, terminated early due to a uh, diminution of effect over time, and Odyssey Outcomes, which is an ongoing trial. So Fourier was a very large study and included over 27,000 patients with established cardiovascular disease. They all had a qualifying LDL level of at least 70 on optimized statin treatment. The trial compared evolocumab with placebo. The follow-up uh, was for a median of 26 months, and the primary outcome was a five-part MACE, as you can see on the slide, CV death, MI stroke, unstable angina, or REVASC. There was a profound contrast in LDL cholesterol levels in this study. In the placebo group, they were maintained at about 90 milligrams per deciliter through the treatment period, and in the evolocumab group, they remained at about 30 milligrams per deciliter. And this did translate into a reduction in the primary five-part five MACE outcome, as shown on the slide here, with about a 15% reduction, um, significant uh, with many, many uh, zeros. But if we look more closely at the components of this composite MACE outcome, there are some perplexing findings here. So you can see that MI, stroke, and REVASC were all robustly diminished with the active treatment with the PCSK9 antibody with hazard ratios 0 0.73, 0 0.79, 0 0.78. One would expect this to translate into a mortality reduction. And there were a lot of deaths in this trial. There were um, almost 900 deaths, as you can see at the bottom. But there was no reduction, and in fact, a slight numerical excess of all-cause mortality as well as cardiovascular mortality in the actively treated group. And this is a perplexing finding. Why was there no effect on mortality in Fourier? Well, we don't know, but there have been a couple of uh, potential explanations offered. One is that the MI and stroke events that were prevented with active treatment were not serious enough or perhaps were not followed long enough to be reflected in reduced mortality. That's possible. The second um, is the possibility that there was some countervailing adverse effect that led to um, a neutral effect on mortal mortality despite a reduction in MI and stroke and REVASC. Or this could simply be a play of chance. We don't know. But given this finding of no effect on death and a reduction in MI stroke and REVASC, the results of this trial indicate that it would take 148 patient years of treatment to prevent one non-fatal cardiovascular event. And if one takes arbitrarily a cost of drug of about $7,000 per year, that translates into a cost of about a million dollars to prevent one non-fatal cardiovascular event. The good news is that the safety of PCSK9 inhibition so far has been good. Um, injection site reactions are a little bit more common than with placebo. They're usually mild. There's been no evidence of any neurocognitive adverse effects or an increased incidence of diabetes. But these uh, uh, observations are offered with the caveat that the duration of exposure to date has been relatively brief. So to conclude, we have proof of concept that adding PCSK9 monoclonal antibody therapy to statin therapy leads to regression of coronary atherosclerosis. We learned that from Glagov. And a reduction in MACE outcomes as shown in Fourier and also in the prematurely terminated SPIRE trial. But these treatments are not for everyone. So these trials enrolled only patients with LDL cholesterol levels of at least 70 on optimized statin therapy. And if you use statins effectively, 
Most patients can achieve an LDL level below 70 um, with intensive statin and certainly with statin plus azetamide. So only a subset of our patients really would qualify for the trials in which these agents are being, have been and are being investigated in. A mortality benefit and long-term safety remain to be established and cost effectiveness may continue to limit the use of these treatments. So will PCSK9 inhibitors render PC, uh, PCI obsolete? Not yet, but I think before we render a final verdict on this question, uh, we, we should await the results of the Odyssey Outcomes Trial. This is the third major outcomes trial with, the, with this class. Uh, this is a trial in about 19,000 patients with recent ACS. All of them have an LDL above 70 again, but on high-intensity atorvastatin or rosuvastatin. Um, a big difference between this study and the previous ones is that because the population is all ACS, a majority of these patients actually were statin naive prior to their index ACS events, so they're being newly treated. The median follow-up will be somewhat longer than in Fourier, about 32 months. The primary outcome is a four-part MACE, coronary heart disease, death, MI stroke, and unstable angina, and the trial will complete in the end, at the end of 2017. So we'll have to wait and see what it shows. Thank you.